Hey everyone, welcome back to Cop Needs a Homestead and I bring you another Karen video. This time, Karen owns a barber shop. But I just wanted to like face palm so hard because she, this was just hilarious in my opinion. Like I can understand her frustration at a point, but at the same time, you gotta put on your uh, Big girl, you know, business panties girl. So anyways, this barber shop opened earlier this month in Osoyoos, British Columbia by an East Indian gentleman who opened the barber shop in Oliver with the same name three years earlier, sorry, in 2017, my bad. Uh, Surgit, that's the name of the owner. Uh, you know, just, you know, created a second business because, you know, he's seen business blooming. I'm, this is what I'm assuming, of course. But anyways, a few days after opening his shop, this woman comes in by the name of Sue Gerard of Dirty Harry's Barber. And basically, what in my opinion, it felt like she was berating him just because she, he opened another shop. And it's in his full right to open another shop. The city gave him a business license. He can set his own prices. I mean, and that was another thing. She, he was, you know, a bit cheaper than the other barbers in town. And it's like, come on. You know, just because he's cheaper... Doesn't mean he's better. Doesn't mean he's gonna steal your clientele. I'm not sure if barbers have like the same like rapport with their clientele as you know salon stylists. These barbers mostly deal with men, and salons usually deal with women. It seems that's just the way it seems. So, I know I've had my hairstylist since I was 14, and I'm 28. So. 14 years, I've had my stylist. She's done my prom hair. She's going to be doing my wedding hair. And, you know, if you've got a good rapport with your clientele, they're not going to leave you. They're going to follow you to every salon you go to. At least that was with my experience with my hairstylist. And I've heard similar experiences with other hairstylists that, you know, it's the clientele who loves you and connects with you. You know, they'll follow you every place you go and that was the same with my nail technicians you know when I was used to get my nails done if I was gonna get my nails done now hell yeah I'd book as soon as possible because Janelle's always booked up but she's like I think in her fourth location since she's moved into town so I digress you know my little tangent there about retention of clientele so yeah, apparently he's search its pricing is like fifteen ninety nine for a haircut. And you know you know I'm just gonna play the audio clip and we'll just pause where I wanna smash my face. Cause I, I wanna smash my face a few good times on this guy. Surprised it's not broken yet, because so many times I just wanna go like this. I mean, I just have one thing to say, just the way how she was like talking about being new in Canada. 
would she still have like kind of like that same Karen-y attitude if it was like 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 a Caucasian person per se just saying you know or a Native American person who runs a salon I mean I, th 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 this is just me speculating you know I, I'm I'm curious you know but let's go on Again, I feel she is, you know, a little on the racist side. This again, this is just me and my opinions. But that that's how it's coming off to me. It that is truly how it's coming off to me because honestly, the fact that he's able to open a second location in this time is great for Surgeon. I honestly believe it is great for him. I believe, in my opinion, that Sue here is, um, maybe she's afraid she's going to lose her clientele, maybe because her, you know, just her clientele's going to her because they've been going to her for a while, and she feels that she's losing her touch, maybe, and, you know, losing her retention, which has happened. I mean, if you don't keep up with, like, the latest things and things like that, sometimes clients leave you. If you don't, you know, fix your, you know, mistakes and own up to them, clients will leave you. Unless you're like me and you love being the guinea pig for your, you know, care stylist. Like the one time Victoria was smashing my eyeballs into my skull while she was putting in my, uh hair extensions. They're clipping hair extensions and she just like <laughs> Oh, that was funny. And then there is the time she took out an earring while she was straightening my hair. I didn't even feel it come out. All of a sudden she's got like an earring in the straightener. It was actually hilarious. <laughs> but again, you know, like I said, you know, it's just like <laughs> we can all laugh at those things now. You know, we all make jokes. Right. But again, it's like it, client retention here, you know. And here's another thing, maybe, I know because I live in the air, not, not the area down there, but I've been down there, there's a high East Indian population, maybe the East Indian people want to go to an East Indian barber, so they can, you know, have, you know, East Indian chit chat, you know? It's, again, who you resonate with. I mean... I wouldn't mind getting, you know, somebody that did my eyelashes or something like that. That spoke, you know, a different language so I can practice. But no. Oh, we should probably get finished this. Bloody hell. Where's this thing? For people in a small town, it doesn't matter where you live. It does not matter. Where you live. I know. I respect for people's right prices. Then I respect No, people. that's not having respect for people who are already in business. It's, it's one thing to open right next door to a bar shop. That is extremely ballsy and so disrespectful on every level. But to put a sign out there for $15, no. Yeah. Again, I can understand her frustration. Bloody hell, Cassinet. But I just...
And she did say nothing I said was racist. Again, my opinion, it felt a little racist. Because, again, I just want to, like, say, what if it was another person? If she had, like, left out the uh, coming to the country and, you know, oh, if I did this in India, I'd be able to buy, you know, not a racist. I unfortunately don't buy it because, you know, you use little personal things like that, which just undermines it everything at the end. But then I'm super critical as fuck. So, I'm going to say shit like that. But, you know, again, you know, there's a large East Indian community, and especially with immigrants who don't speak the language very well, maybe they are more comfortable going to someone who does speak their language. So, I understand her frustration. There's another barbershop opening in town. But my question is, how much does Magic Cuts, or like one of those like large locations like charge because they're all usually set prices let's just see what if the magic cuts like open right so we've got one of those just curious you know Okay, that's not helpful. Going to the website, not helpful. There we go. Hopefully. So, um, a clipper cut, which I'm assuming most men is the style that they would get. At a magic cuts at this I'm using salonprices.com because and they looked at Toronto Ontario and Quebec prices the average was $16.95 and up so a dollar more than what Surgit is you know charging Again, you know, I, it's up to the client. And like I said, you know, he, he's got a different demographic that he can easily get, which is the East Indian population. So, you know, I really don't, I, I understand maybe business is tough with the, with the whole COVID and everything, but I just, I'm just, you know, flabbergasted at the whole, you know, thing that's like seriously anyways like and subscribe igor eggs igor doesn't want to come on the screen today but if you love igor more likes and more subscribes gives her extra loves and pets i'll see you next time bye